<clears throat> Good morning, everybody. My name is Hannah Zabari. I am from um, Birmingham, Alabama, a recent graduate of the University of Alabama um, with my master's in structural engineering and a focus on UHPC. So I'm very grateful for you all for being here today, and I'm excited to talk to you about ultra high performance concrete and its potential as an environmentally friendly concrete material. So last fall was the first time that I had attended an ACI conference. And um, after reviewing many sessions, I noticed that we had um, these three topics that were really dominating uh, the time that ACI was spending on. So one of them was sustainability with a lot of sessions focused on the design life and serviceability of concrete structures and how we could extend those. Um, and also about repurposing structures um, that had outlived one sort of life, but that could be reused for a different one or retrofitted for a different one. There was also a lot of focus on the environmental impact that we as an industry um, have. And so things like alternative cementitious materials are a very common topic, um, as well as recycled aggregates, either from old concrete or rubberized tire um, and carbon capture as a way to um, mitigate carbon um, as an end stage uh, solution. And then of course we have our concrete technologies, UHPC foremost um, among them. We have, I believe six sessions dedicated to them this time around. So it's clearly a topic on everyone's mind. Um, and so as I was watching these sessions, I got to thinking, why are we not maybe overlapping these topics a little bit more? It seems like there could be a good potential um, for UHPC to fit into these categories of sustainability and environmentally conscious design. So I know that this is a UHPC focused session, but I would like to take a step away from that just for a second to explain um, the background that I have that kind of brought me to this idea. So when I was a sophomore in high school, or sorry, a sophomore in college, I became um, involved in research where we were looking at a bio-based admixture in the form of black tea. Um, so the principal investigator on this project was Dr. July Wang and his uh, PhD candidate, Yi Fang. So the rationale here was that uh, they had observed, as I think many people that have studied supplementary cementitious materials know, that metacalin is a proven SCM that has a good good rapport with um, being able to increase the strength of concrete uh, when replaced uh, as part of the OPC. Um, it's got high pozzolanic reactivity, which makes it ideal for this application, um, but it also can impair the microstructure and workability of um, your mixture because of the way the particles have trouble dispersing in the mix. So some common uh, solutions to counteract that are to include a super plasticizer, which you know, we all know we'll get the job done, but they can also include harmful chemicals that we would rather stay away from. So uh, they also had noticed that a processed plant-based admixture uh, with polyphenol molecules could achieve the same effect of helping those metacalin particles disperse. Um, however, a processed pure plant polyphenol uh, still comes with a high production cost and a lot of waste and energy put into making that bio-based admixture. So they were interested in seeing if we could directly extract those molecules through a much less intensive process. Um, so we were looking at tea leaves and if we could boil tea leaves to extract those same molecules um, and using that tea water as the mixing water for the concrete achieve this um, improvement in workability that they were after. So uh, like I said, I was a sophomore when I joined this. So I'm not going to claim to be an expert on all the background science of how this went down, but their conclusions were that it worked. You can see the compressive strengths um, in the graph on the left there. And of course we can see that the higher the dosage of metacalin, the higher the compressive strength. But interestingly enough, also the higher the T dosage, the higher the compressive strength. So what they concluded through a combination of um, microstructure analysis and um, microscopic observ observation of both the water, the tea water and uh, the concrete samples were that it was indeed rich in those polyphenols that they were hoping to extract. 
And that included, um, or that allowed for the increase in forkability that they were after, and also um, the increase in strength that we see because of the better mixing and therefore better uh, access of nucleation sites for the concrete. Uh, there's also quick cost and um, environmental analysis done on this, and they concluded that it was a worthy endeavor. So this is the lab that I started in, very different from UHPC. Um, as I got further into my studies, I realized that I wanted to do something on a little bit larger of a scale. And so that's when I uh, got into a lab that was dealing with UHPC. So I have new up here, not because UHPC is new to the world or to the nation or even to the lab that I got involved in, uh, but because it was new to me. And that's something that can be really challenging as a student researcher um, is to put yourself into a situation that you know almost nothing about. So in real time, I was learning um, about the particle compaction theory that uh, UHPC is based on. We can see the difference in the structure there where the um, particles are graded a lot more finely and um, optimized so that they fit together and create that really good tight pore structure um, that gives it these impressive compressive uh, properties and also learning about the importance of microfiber reinforcement to gain those tensile strengths that uh, give UHPC so much of its um, advantages as an engineering material. And also about the um, resulting extremely low permeability properties um, from that dense pore structure. So some things that really fascinated me about UHPC were the um, advantages that you could get in the smaller cross sections that could achieve the same structural resistance, um, and as well as the extended service life that you could expect because of um, its extremely low permeability properties that would allow, allow it to resist some of the common attacks that a tra traditional concrete would have. Um, and also the complex shapes and textures that could be cast with this material um, to watch it flow and fill every nook and cranny for the first time and then pull off the form and realize that it's caught the shape of the piece of tape that was stuck to the wood um, is a pretty interesting experience. So I moved into my master's program with this knowledge and began researching UHPC um, as a, an option for tornado impact loads. So it's an unfortunate reality that uh, tornado fatalities happen across the nation um, and they are extremely preventable. We know what kinds of structures will prevent people from uh, dying in tornado uh, winds and hail and uh, debris flying through the air. However, most fatalities incur in homes because tornado shelters are not always accessible uh, to people in individual residences. And that's for a variety of reasons. I mean, it's, you know, it can be um, inaccessible for mobility reasons if you do have a shelter, but you can't get there fast enough. Um, it can be intrusive to your home, taking up space in your yard or garage. Um, and they also can be expensive. I mean, this uh, traditional concrete bunker style is on the lower end of um, what you might expect to pay for one, but it's still several thousand dollars and uh, looks like this in the side of your yard. So, you know, if we could improve that, that would be great. Now, UHPC literature uh, does suggest that UHPC is really great under impact loads. So we were hoping to combine the idea of a more accessible, uh, more aesthetic tornado shelter um, with UHPC as an option uh, because of its great impact resistance. So we were testing UHPC panels specifically under the International Code Council uh, slash Nat National Storm Shelter Association's uh, guidance, which requires uh, basically a two by four to be shot at hundred miles an hour and um, the panel to survive. So we were in very preliminary stages of this uh, and due to material constraints, we were not able to test a full-sized uh, tornado shelter, but we were testing individual panels and the results were very encouraging. Basically because of UHPC's very high ductility, because of all those fiber reinforcements, um, it was actually able to deflect and then regain its original position 
when absorbing that impact load from the two by four, you can kind of see in that photo just how bent out it is. Um, and that piece of like brown paper that you can see behind it is simulating a person standing in the tornado shelter. So the idea being if it can deflect less than three inches um, and not damage the person by spalling or ejecting anything in the background, then you've passed. Now, I don't wanna say like straight out that this is uh, the new you know, future of tornado shelter design. Obviously a lot more work needs to be done on this, um, but it was um, an encouraging conclusion that, it sh that UHPC probably should be further studied in this way. Also a quick cost competitive analysis for this uh, showed that including material and installation costs, uh, this was in the range or a little bit lower than many of the tornado shelter options that we found out there. So with these two kind of competing research backgrounds that I had, um, you might imagine my surprise when I graduated this summer and got a job that somehow used both of them. So I now work for National Cement and am a uh, product representative for their UHPC brand, SmartUp. So a lot of my job includes um, being project support to the engineers that are designing with UHPC, working with them on material specifications, providing on-field um, support for QC and um, just general advice on the best way to mix and place and cast UHPC. I also do a lot of outreach like this and also where I travel to um, engineers that are looking to get involved with UHPC and maybe just don't know enough about it. On the other side, I also am involved in the environmental reporting that my company does. So I can work with um, a lot of our cement plants and ready mix plants to capture their data and also look for additional data um, that really highlights how we're performing um, in the context of environmental impact. And then I have the opportunity to identify places that we could improve. So now I'd like to return, having explained where all these thoughts are coming from, return to that question, can UHPC be a sustainable and environmentally friendly material? Now there's not to be sure a whole lot of research on this, um, but I would like to point to one study by Yu Dong at the uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic Institute, where he basically explores um, the trade-offs and looks at the long-term impact of UHPC um, to see how it measures up to a traditional concrete option. And I think that the results are something that if you have experience with UHPC, maybe you're not too surprising um, that in the initial like short-term installation, it's going to be more costly and it's going to have a higher environmental impact. However, because of that extended service life and the, uh, the lessened need for maintenance on ongoing and replacement throughout the years, that a UHPC solution can actually be a more cost-effective and environmentally effective solution in the long term. Um, now, of course, there are challenges that still exist with UHPC. I'm not here to say that it uh, will immediately or should immediately replace concrete um, just in general, but it can be a viable solution. And with some uh, future research from our students who we rely on so much to maybe look at ways to improve cement content, um, admixture, inclusion, and um, the amount or the quality of supplementary cementitious materials that UHPC requires, that it has a chance to make even further gains than what it's uh, currently showing. So then some takeaways, um, just as a professional, I think that it's important that as an industry, we look at how these topics come together because there is real promise there. Um, because I, I truly believe that UHPC has the potential to transform how we deal with our infrastructure issues in this nation. Um, and that it, of course, still has a long way to go, but that it's a really promising path. And then as a student, if there's any, especially younger students in the crowd or in the audience, um, it's never too late to pivot to a new topic. And don't think that just because you've spent um, a lot of time and energy in one thing that you now feel like you're not using at all and it was a waste, 
it's not a waste. You never know when those things are going to come back and that experience is going to really help you out. And also get comfortable not knowing things because that is a harsh reality that maybe no one will tell you. You're going to go through life not knowing so many things. And the faster that you can be okay with that, the more open you are to learning and finding out some of those things. Okay, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, hello, Hannah, great presentation. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that you work with National Cement and you uh, like provide some sort of environmental reporting. Mm -hmm. I was interested in from that type of environmental reports and as part of your job, what are your comments on the sustainability and environmental impact of UHPC from mm -hmm. that like, professional experience? Yeah, so I would say that um, what we are focusing on right now in our company is um, identifying specific like inputs that go into our cement and UHPC and how those can be um, swapped out for better alternatives. So for example, um, at the cement plant where we manufacture the cement for the UHPC, um, looking at alternative fuel powers for that kiln. So instead of using something like coal or even natural gas, um, using things like recycled sawdust or, you know, tires, anything that you can burn to get those um, BTUs basically to heat up the material. Um, so I think that that's something that, that we've been working on just as an example. And I do think that, I mean, it is, it is clear that compared to other products, UHPC yard per yard has a pretty big environmental impact. So what I like to tell people is that um, you know, you really do have to look at the life of the structure that you're building and that it's also, again, a case by case scenario, right? Like UHPC is not this magical material that's going to come in and just save everything. Um, some important analysis is to be done. But if you can look at a particular project and say UHPC can last me two or three or four times as long as a different type of repair or structure, then you might be getting to the point where those initial higher costs, environmental and otherwise, um, are really being offset in a positive way.